I always knew I was different. I grew up in the country, just outside of a small town called Prince George. The house I grew up in was originally a trailer that my dad had built on over the years. And the yard was filled with gardens that my mom and I had made. I had one brother, three years younger than I. But other than that, I had no one my age in my area. So I grew up on my own, basically. I was a shy, quiet kid that entertained myself with reading and art. When I was about 15 years old, I started to realize and accept the fact that I liked other boys. And it was about this time that I started to look around for information on my new take on sexuality. Except, there was none. Coming out in a small, rural town, even to myself, was difficult. But it was a small step in the uphill battle to define myself. I lived in Colombia all of my life. I never traveled, visited, or exposed myself to other cultures before coming to Canada. However, five years after I was born, in 1992, I was doing my second favorite activity as a child. I was watching this television program about traveling around the world. My imagination used to go wild. I dreamt of adventuring in Egypt, Africa, and Italy. I dreamt of eating different types of food, of speaking different languages. Ever since then, I promised myself that I will eventually travel and see the world, that I will one day live outside of Colombia. I gotta say that dreams do come true, not exactly how you will expect them to, but true all the same. When I first came to Canada on October 3rd, 2000, the last thing in my mind was the need for adventure. And what I wanted the most was to be able to go back and be with my family and to feel included again. The thought of never stepping in my land again and never seeing my family again was scary. But even scarier was what I was about to face. I realized I was different from the other boys at school. I didn't like girls like other guys I knew did. And I didn't follow the norm for being a guy. I was always called names as a kid, but what kid hasn't been teased? I was called gay one day, and I had no idea what it meant or how it could be wrong. I had always heard it around, and I knew it as a negative word. So I asked someone, and they told me it was when two guys have sex. I was so confused. I had only heard it used in a negative manner. And then it hit me. Oh crap, I'm gay. I started school six months after arriving in Canada because the Spanish multicultural workers were cut that year. So there was no one to show me which school to go to or no one who will be able to translate for me and my parents. During those months, before I entered school, I wasted all of my time watching television. It is very difficult to enjoy television when you can't understand a single thing of what they're saying. I felt lonely, but I was safe. Safe was a feeling that I wouldn't be able to feel again until much after. At school, I was mentally and physically hurt by my classmates. They made fun of me because I didn't speak English. The situation got to the point where I felt that I wasn't going to be able to take it anymore. It was so frustrating not being able to find support or information on this new definition of me. And it made me feel even more anxious when all I kept hearing is how bad being queer was. I began to feel alone. Like, I was the only person that felt this way. I was a freak. A pervert. I was wrong. You are inconsistent. You cannot be programmed.
You are inconsistent. You cannot be programmed. You are inconsistent. You cannot be programmed. You are inconsistent. You are inferior. You are inconsistent. found others like me in my community. This helped me get deeply involved in the queer community and working with youth. I still had a lot of questions. So I went to workshops, researched, and took on mentors. And eventually I traveled to Vancouver for a queer youth conference. While in Vancouver, I fell in love with it. And I eventually moved there, feeling it had the room I needed to grow. Coming to Vancouver from a small town was exciting and terrifying at the same time. In Prince George, I knew where to go if I needed support. Here, I was lost. I was fed up with everything that was going on. And just when it seemed that I was reaching my breaking point, I met two people that transformed my life entirely. They were two youth my age, also from Colombia. And through them, I met a lot of new people. And all of a sudden, the school didn't seem so bad after all. I was finally getting out there in the city and getting to know new programs and resources. And amongst them was Immigrant Services Society and a program that they were starring called Multicultural Youth Circle, which was a program created to help immigrant refugee youth support other youth like them. I was fortunate enough to be accepted into it, and I got the opportunity to meet people that had gone through similar situations as I had. They taught me not to be a victim, but to do something about it, and be a mentor for my peers. I finally met the right people, and through them, I was able to connect with various organizations that linked me into queer Vancouver. Before, I was working in sexual health so I could be safe and healthy. Now I'm doing it so other youth feel empowered, to know that change is possible, and they are the masters of their own body, that they don't have to be lost. Put 